Uh, in the first section, I'd like to describe the features of plasmonic photocatalyst uh, by comparing with the conventional semiconductor photocatalyst, then solar hydrogen cycle and uh, solar oxygen cycle. Uh, this is the solar spectrum with the photon number taken at the ordinate. As you can see, the sunlight is widely distributed with a peak around 680 nanometer. So, to increase the solar to chemical conversion efficiency, uh, it is necessary to utilize the visible to near infrared light. Uh, here, uh, let me compare the optical properties of the typical semiconductor photocatalyst TLO2 and a plasmonic photocatalyst AUTLO2. Uh, TLO2 hardly absorbs the visible light. On the other hand, loading go nanoparticles induces strong and broad absorption around 600 nanometer due to the localized surface plasmon resonance LSPR. Uh, Photoelectrochemical water splitting by TiO2 electrode is well known as the Honda Fujishima effect. Uh, light irradiation of TiO2 excites the electrons in the valence band to the conduction band. The valence band holds oxidized water to have oxygen, while the conduction band electrons are transported to the cathode. Uh, through the external circuit to reduce water to hydrogen. Uh, right figure shows the incident photon to current conversion efficiency, IPCE action spectra. As you can see, TO2 electrode hardly responds to the visible light. On the other hand, the AUTO2 plasmonic electrode responds to visible to near infrared light at photon energy larger than 1.5 eV. Uh, what I'm showing here is a basic scheme for the plasmonic water splitting. The LSPR excitation by photons with energy larger than 1.5 eV generates hot carriers in the gold nanoparticles. Part of the resulting hot electrons are injected in the conduction band of TiO2 while the hot holes oxidize water. Then, the solar to chemical conversion efficiency can be provided by multiplication of the efficiencies of the cascade of the following events. Uh, light harvesting by plasmonic metal, hot carrier generation, hot electron injection from plasmonic metal to semiconductor, charge separation and uh, redox reaction. Uh, the second section is solar hydrogen cycle involving water splitting as a key process. Uh, water sp splitting is energetically a large uphill reaction, and the progress by heating is practically impossible because only 2% of water is decomposed, even at 2000 degrees C. In principle, this, re this reaction can be driven by the photons with energy larger than 1.23 eV, or light wavelengths shorter than about 1,000 nanometer. If hydrogen can be produced by effectively utilizing sunlight, input of hydrogen into the fuel cell uh, generates electric energy to complete the solar hydrogen cycle. In water splitting by the AUTL the plasmonic photocatalyst, there are two problems. One is that the conduction band edge of TiO2 is insufficient for hydrogen pollution reaction. Also, as shown by this uh, high resolution TM image of AUTO2, the interface is uh, disordered at an atomic level. This can cause the loss of the electron injection from gold nanoparticle to TiO2 due to the interfacial recombination. As a first topic, I'd like to talk about the design and the preparation of an advanced plasmonic photocatalyst for water splitting. 
Uh, this figure compared the energy diagram of AUTL2 and AUCDS. The conduction band minimum energy of CDS is significantly higher than that of TL2. Uh, recently, we have shown in the AUCDS system that uh, LSPR excitation causes a hot electron transfer from gold nanoparticle to CDS. Then, if we can couple gold nanoparticle and CDS with high quality interface, uh, it should be a promising plasmonic photocatalyst for water splitting. For the catalyst preparation, we used the photodeposition technique previously developed. As a first step, gold nanoparticles are deposited on TL2 by the deposition, dep uh, deposition precipitation method. As a second step, AUTL2 is irradiated by UV light in ethanol solution containing cadmium ions and elemental sulfur. This method is also applicable to AU zinc oxide, and CDS photodeposition was carried out at 25 and 50 degrees C. As shown by TM images of the resulting sample, each particle on zinc oxide takes a gold core CDS shell structure. Uh, right figure show the CDS shell thickness as a function of irradiation time. The thickness increases with increasing irradiation time. And then it can be controlled within 5 nanometer by irradiation time. Uh, these are high resolution TM images for the samples prepared by the photodeposition at 25 and 50 degrees C. Please pay attention to the shape of the gold core. At 25 degrees C, the shape is hemisphere-like. On the other hand, at 50 degrees C, the shape changes to angular one with sharp edges and corners. Interestingly, in this sample, a heteroepitaxial junction is formed between gold 111 and the CDS 0001 planes. Further, by dissolving the zinc oxide support, we can obtain such a unique heteronano structure, and we call this uh, half cut AU core CDS shell nano egg. These are TEM and high resolution TEM images for the sample. As you can see, half cut AU core CDS shell nano eggs are produced, and importantly, the heteroepitaxial junction is maintained. Okay, uh, let me summarize topic one. Uh, CDS photodeposition on AU zinc oxide at 50 degrees C is AU core CDS shell nano hybrids with heteroepitaxial junction. Uh, increasing temperature of the CDS photodeposition from 25 to 50 degrees C induces a round two faceted particle transformation of the gold core. Half cut AU core CD shell nano egg can be obtained by dissolving, by selectively dissolving the zinc oxide support. Okay, the next topic is water splitting by the half cut AU core CD shell plasmonic photocatalyst. Uh, here are the visible to near infrared absorption spectra for half cut AU core CD shell with different dimension of the components. Uh, for comparison, the spectra for gold colloid, CDS, and AUCDS are also shown. Gold colloid had the LSPR around 520 nanometer, and the absorption edge of CDS is near the same wavelength. In the spectrum for AUCDS, uh, the LSPR undergoes strong damping. In contrast, in the spectra for half cut AU quasite shell, the LSPR peak red shifts and the absorption in the visible to infrared, uh, near infrared region drastically intensifies. Further, the absorption intensity <coughs> increases with increasing CDS shell thickness and gold core size. 
So we can expect a high light harvesting efficiency for half cut AU core CDS shell. We carried out water splitting under irradiation of red light. Uh, this figure compared the photocatalytic activity of various samples with a gold particle size fixed at about 5.5 nanometer. As you can see, gold and CDS are almost inactive, but the physical mixture shows a low activity. Strikingly, non heterepitaxial junction half cut A equal CDS shell shows much higher activity which further increases more than twice in the heterepitaxial junction sample. Right figure show the effect of CDS shell thickness on the photocatalytic activity. The activity strongly depends on the CDS shell thickness, uh, reaching a maximum around 2 nanometer. Also, we studied the gold core size effect on the photocatalytic activity by changing it from 5.5 to 12.1 nanometer. Surprisingly, the activity increases by about, by about one order of magnitude. Further, to check the stability, three-day reaction was repeated three times. As you can see, the evolution rates of hydrogen and oxygen hardly change with a ratio of 2 to 1, maintained over 200 hours. Okay, let me summarize topic two. Red light irradiation of half cut A equal C the shell nano egg used rights to continuous stoichiometric water splitting with an unprecedentedly high external quantum yield of 0.24%. Uh, this extremely high photocatalytic activity can result from the following uh, features uh, of half cut A equal C the shell nano egg. Strong light absorption in the visible to near infrared region. Efficient hot electron injection from the gold core to the CDS shell through the large area and high quality interface. A strong reducing ability of the conduction band electrons in the CDS shell. Excellent electrocatalytic electro activity of the gold core for water oxidation. Okay, let me move to the third section for of solar oxygen cycle involving the synthesis of hydrogen peroxide from oxygen uh, from water and oxygen as a key process. Uh, this reaction is also energetically a large uphill reaction, and utilization of thermal energy as the driving force is impossible because uh, hydrogen peroxide is easily decomposed by heating. When using light as the energy source, thermodynamically, this reaction can be driven by the photons with energy larger than 0.54 eV. So if we can photocatalytically produce hydrogen peroxide, uh, input of hydrogen peroxide into the hydrogen peroxide fuel cell generates electric energy to complete the solar oxygen cycle. Uh, generally, the photocatalyst for the efficient solar to chemical transformation uh, should fulfill the following requirements. A wide spectral response to effectively utilize the sunlight as an energy source. Effective charge separation, effective charge separation by suppressing the recombination, durability, and non-toxicity. In the case of photocatalytic hydrogen peroxide synthesis, we must be careful that uh, hydrogen peroxide once produced is not decomposed. For example, hydrogen peroxide is strongly absorbed on the TL2 surface to further undergo reductive decomposition. Then, the photocatalyst for hydrogen peroxide synthesis should additionally satisfy the following requirements. Uh, preferential to electron uh, oxygen reduction over four electron oxygen reduction. Uh, restriction of the composition of hydrogen peroxide once generated. Particularly, 
it is difficult to satisfy requirement A1 because for electron oxygen reduction, it's thermodynamically more favorable than two electron oxygen reduction. Okay, let me move to the last topic, photocatalytic synthesis of hydrogen peroxide. Uh, this figure compared the photocatalytic activity of TiO2, PTTiO2, and AuTiO2 for two electron oxygen reduction. Uh, in this case, ethanol was added as a sacrificial electron donor, while only a slight amount of hydrogen peroxide is generated in the TiO2 system. PTTiO2 yields about 1 millimolar hydrogen peroxide after 24-hour irradiation. On the other hand, AuTiO2 shows much higher photocatalytic activity and several millimolar hydrogen peroxide is produced. Uh, this striking photocatalytic activity mainly results from the excellent electrocatalytic activity of gonad particles for two electron oxygen reduction. Uh, recently, we have synthesized a three component hybrid photocatalyst consisting of ruthenium oxide, TiO2, and gold nanoparticle. By a hydrothermal method, we studied the photocatalytic activity for hydrogen oxide synthesis from water and oxygen under UV light irradiation. Both ruthenium oxide and butyl TiO2 belong to the tetragonal crystal system, and the A axis mismatch is 2.1%. As shown uh, by this TM image, a thin layer of ruthenium oxide is observed on the TiO2 surface. Further, high resolution TM image showed that the ruthenium uh, oxide 1001 and TiO2001 that distances are slightly expand and shrink with respect to the bulk values respectively, which leads to the formation of an atomically commensurate interface. An interfacial model with a heterotaxial relation of ruthenium 110 parallel to TiO2 110 is proposed. Right figure shows Raman spectra for the samples prepared at various hydrothermal re reaction time. Uh, TiO2 has two signals due to the EG and A1G modes at uh, 448 and 615 decipro reciprocal centimeter, respectively. Uh, interestingly, a significant redshift in the EG mode is caused by the heterotaxial growth of ruthenium oxide on TiO2. Uh, this bar graph compares the concentration of hydrogen peroxide generated after one hour irradiation in various systems. In the AU ruthenium oxide system, about uh, 15 millimolar hydrogen peroxide is generated, while Ruthenium oxide and ruthenium oxide TiO2 are almost inactive. AuTiO2 exhibits much higher photocatalytic activity than Au -rutile, uh, ruthenium oxide to yield about 30 millimolar hydrogen peroxide. Uh, strikingly, ruthenium oxide TiO2 Au three component system exhibits photocatalytic activity far exceeding that of AuTiO2 to afford about uh, 80 millimolar hydrogen peroxide. Uh, information about the charge separation in the heteronanostructured photocatalyst can be gained by photoluminescence measurements. A right figure show the photoluminescence spectra for TiO2 and ruthenium oxide TiO2. Uh, TiO2 has broad band due to the emission from tra trap levels around 520 nanometer. Uh, in the spectrum of ruthenium oxide TiO2, the emission band almost disappears. Uh, this finding indicates that effective charge separation occurs in this three component system. Further, 
to determine the direction of the photo-induced charge transfer, the reduction and oxidation sites are labeled by the photodeposition of CDS and PBO2, respectively. As shown by this TM image, CDS is selectively deposited on the surface of gold nanoparticles. On the other hand, uh, PBO2 is selectively deposited on the surface of ruthenium oxide. Clearly, gold nanoparticle and ruthenium oxide work at the reduction sites and oxidation sites of the hybrid photocatalyst, respectively. Namely, efficient charge separation can be achieved due to the interfacial transfer of the TiO2 conduction band electrons to gold nanoparticle and TiO2 balance band holes to ruthenium oxide. Okay, let me summarize topic three. Uh, thin heterepitaxial layers of ruthenium oxide as were selectively formed on the TiO2 surface uh, of gold nanoparticle loaded rutile TiO2 particles by a hydrothermal method. Ruthenium oxide TiO2 AU exhibits a high level of photocatalytic activity for the production of hydrogen peroxide from water and oxygen. Uh, this striking activity is ascribable to the efficient charge transfer through the high quality and large area junction, in addition to the electrocatalytic activity of ruthenium oxide for oxygen evolution reaction and gold nanoparticle for two electron oxygen reduction. Finally, I'd like to thank our collaborators listed here. Thank you very much for your attention.